Well, hello and welcome to this Fatih Speed video with me, Tim Jones. I've got the amazing Sam Gregory with me, and we have the even more amazing Chris Palmer here, Fatih Speed <laughs> Ambassador, FRPS, and many, many more letters, I'd imagine. <laughs> Good to be here. So, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, we're actually going to talk about Chris's work, yeah. and he's got some, brought some amazing prints along, so first to have a look through and talk about. Um, but before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. Just click that button in the bottom right. Also, sign up to our newsletter as well for exclusive discounts and all the news. And also, don't forget to download, if you haven't already, I'm sure you all have, the Photospeed Art of Printing, the free ebook on photos, on everything to do with printing and getting great prints out of your printer. Like this, yes. I like the <laughs> like things these. we're going to show you. Amazing prints <laughs> here. So, well, you've been, well, I suppose you've been a photo spinner for quite a few years now, haven't you? Yes, so I it's, have, yes. I'm a, very uh, <laughs> appreciative of the support that Photospeed have given me uh, over the years, uh, and it's uh, allowed me to uh, print freely and produce uh, some nice prints, which some of which we're going to look at uh, during this mm. video. Um, it's uh, uh, lovely to have the support and uh, recognition uh, by a significant company like uh, Photospeed and uh, I enjoy <laughs> their support and uh, promote it when I can. Yeah, good. So how, well thank you, yeah, it, it's nice to support people like yourself to be honest, I'm passionate about photography and print in particular as well obviously, but so how, how did you get into photography I suppose? Let's start at the beginning, let's kind of... Well, <laughs> I, I think I owe a great debt of gratitude to my father, who's sadly no longer with us, but uh, he introduced me to photography and uh, a wet dark room. Yes, I am that old. Um, <laughs> when I was about seven, so I've been doing photography about 20 years now. Hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good <laughs> <laughs> uh, But uh, I've always had that passion for uh, looking through a camera and expressing myself uh, with, uh, through photography. Uh, I think deep within me there's a, a frustrated artist really and I got to art O level and recognised that I didn't really have the ability to go beyond that. So I try and use photography to uh, scratch the creative itch that is within me. Uh, and uh, so photography has been with me almost continuously for all of that time. And I've graduated through various cameras and so forth and joined a camera club. Uh, and enjoyed the support and uh, camaraderie that is uh, built up within a camera club uh, and then had a, a strong association then with the RPS and the wider world of photography that the RPS represents, uh, which uh, is great. So photography has been with me all the time, really. Mm. Mm. And we've got, I, I picked out a few images with you. It was really interesting that Chris brought a few different things and it was very... Uh, nice to just see them and have a chat between us what we were going to talk about and why and the reason we've got this image up first is because there's a bit of a photo speed link there isn't there yes there is indeed mm. and this is probably i suppose the best paper best pr uh, <laughs> image uh, i'm ever going to take uh, and it was taken in iceland uh, with uh, a friend of mine uh, at the end of a day which was very unrewarding generally we uh, had had really bad weather um, uh, it was uh, a demotivating day and at the end of the day we ended up in a nearby town and unusually for Iceland we had a bad meal because generally the food is quite good in Iceland but when we came out of the hotel at about half past eight in the evening the light was lovely and we knew that even though we were tired and a bit fed up we had to make use of this ice, the, uh, this, this weather mm. uh, and l the lovely light. Uh, and so we went to uh, a location called Stocksness, which is in southeast Iceland, and we mooched about and took a few half-hearted pictures. Uh, and even now I can remember folding the tripod up and putting it back into the back of the vehicle. But as I did so, I was looking through the vehicle, through the front windscreen, and saw these semi-wild Icelandic horses coming up the road towards me. You never seen me move so fast in all your life, and I was <laughs> frantically got the camera back out and onto the tripod. Now you can't predict where these horses are going to go, um, but it's a fair bet that they're going to graze on the grassy tussocks uh, on the uh, sand dunes. But I, you can influence where you are in relation to the subject and the background, and so I worked 
at a respectful distance from the, the horses. Uh, and uh, this picture was taken in May, and it doesn't get dark in May. Um, the sun goes down at about uh, 11, half past 11 in the evening, and back up at about half past one in the morning. Mm -hmm. So if you've got the fortitude, you could be photographing 24 hours a day. But this was taken at about half past 10 at night. And although it was the end of a tiring day, you've still got to recognise the, the, the ingredients and the potential of a scene and then mm. harness the technical side of it and the aesthetic side too. And uh, I was, you know, don't you, when you take a good picture generally, mm. there's something that happens and you feel you've got something nice. And uh, the lovely thing about digital photography is, of course, you've got instant feedback. Mm. And I looked at this image when we got back to the hotel and I thought, oh, that might work. And I subsequently processed it and uh, on my return to the UK, the uh, image was uploaded onto my website. And uh, fairly quickly afterwards, I was contacted by uh, Toby Hurlinger, who's the MD of mm. Photospeed, and said, oh, you've got a picture of some Icelandic horses uh, on your website. So I said, yes. He said, I want it. I said, well, that's OK. <laughs> you, you support me. I'll support you. So I sent him the file, and uh, subsequently it was used to launch a photo speed yeah, paper. It's been on our NT, our natural textured bright white ever since. That's I right. Believe, on our swatch. That's so. right. So uh, <laughs> it's perhaps appropriate to start the presentation yeah. with uh, this particular picture. And uh, it's been a very successful photograph for me mm. uh, and reminds me of what is probably, I suppose, is going to be the best evening of photography I'll ever have. But it won't stop me looking for another one. Yeah, <laughs> just chasing that. Yeah, after an inauspicious twelve hours beforehand as well, that's and that's right, it, yeah. isn't it? it? Absolutely, it can turn if the conditions turn, and you can get that uplift because yeah. it is a physical thing, landscape and being mm. outdoors, and mm. it can tie you down. And if we were talking about this off camera, if, if you're wet or you're tired or you're hungry, difficult to to make images. But it, when things just come together, you know you've got to get to work. Yeah, and, mm. and still enjoy the moment I would imagine enjoy the experience of it and, well. and, and recognize that excitement yeah. of being presented with such a wonderful opportunity and my mission statement whenever I'm out on with the camera is to do the subject justice and probably more importantly to get it right at the taking stage mm. rather than rely on you know software to uh, try and make a silk purse out of a sow's ear later or a horse's ear, in this or case. Or a horse's one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's beautiful. Um, and, and I did want to touch on that first yeah. because of that photo speed story. So that explains anyone out there who's seen this image before or on the boxes and whatnot. That's kind of where it came from and who That's it came it. from. Yeah. I've only seen it on the swatch, see, but I think it's even better in the actual print. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful light. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. just, wow. we've got a few to look at, so I'm going to keep us rolling. Thanks to going to slide underneath. Or, yep. Yeah, good man. Because, and Chris, you're going to have to help us a little bit with some of the backgrounds of, of these. And this very striking image in a place I think a lot of landscape photographers may have seen some images from before. But this, for me, has a very particular look to it. But maybe you can give us a bit of the background, Chris. Uh, yeah, I'd be pleased to. Now, this is taken in the classic location of Elgol on the Isle of Skye. And you've got that uh, lovely opportunity to uh, look across to the Cullin Mountains in, in the background. But this is not an easy location to work. Uh, the foreground uh, is beach, and a lot of the boulders are quite difficult to, to navigate. Um, and I say in my lecture that this picture actually probably took me about 15 minutes to take. Now, I don't mean that the exposure mm. time was 15 minutes, but it's the process on location of finding a foreground that is sufficiently strong to justify this particular uh, image. Mm. And I spent a long time trying to find something that was strong enough in the foreground to work. And eventually I fell upon this particular rock. Mm. And the reason I fell upon it was because it had an interesting color and shape. But in my mind, you may not agree, but it almost looks like a finger mm. pointing or directing the viewer. And I'm always thinking about the viewer when I take, take my pictures. What do I want someone who's got to receive my pictures? What do I want them to get out of it? Uh, and uh, so using that foreground rock uh, seemed to be appropriate. And then it's a case of working out exactly the right focal length of lens in order to 
emphasize that foreground but also work with the relationship in the background. So the foreground was the first area that I, I discovered but then subliminally what I would like to think is that the direct uh, juxtaposition of the pointed nature of the rock works quite well with the peak of the uh, mountain in the distance and it is that relationship which is really what this picture is about and I took a few pictures at normal exposures probably the 60th of a second or a 30th of a second and in those photographs because I was previewing the image on the back of my camera there was a lot of visual disturbance in the picture created by sharp definition of the sea but by then recognizing that that was compromising that relationship uh, I then put a 10 stop neutral density filter on the camera which meant that the required exposure was about a half a minute that's smoothing the for the uh, the sea out and simplifying the picture uh, and allowing this connection perhaps to be a little bit more obvious mm, yeah so that was a thought process though for capturing that particular picture i think for me the picture almost starts here doesn't it it starts to lead you it's yeah. corner to corner almost it kind of just leads you in these lines on here as well it's the lines complement that point yeah. don't they exactly and uh, chris just a technical question what what focal length are we at here Do you this is this was taken with a 17 to 35 lens okay. probably at around about 20 mil i would guess I can't remember exactly, I could look it up on the EXIF data, but it was that sort of thing. Because there's a fair amount of depth of field to concern ourselves with here, in that this is fairly close to you. Yes. This is physically not close to yes. you. Um, so that wider lens allows for that, to, you know, to, to kind of work without having to get too crazy on the aperture. Absolutely. Well, there are two points about that. Firstly, yes, the wide angle lens is going to give me uh, a, a good degree of, uh, of front to back sharpness. Um, and I could focus stack it, but I'd much rather get it right in camera. And so if you think about this, if the camera is sitting and orientated vertically, you've got a limited depth of field. But if you set the camera up on the tripod so it's looking down at the subject, and I am so close to this foreground rock that if I reach around the tripod legs, I could touch it. That's how close you need to be. But with the camera canted down at a fair angle, it's increasing the depth of field that I can achieve yeah. and get it right in one shot so that's how I tended to work I turn off the autofocus um, generally because it's compromised by the 10 stop neutral density fields that I'm using but I'm also manually focusing not on the foreground rock but probably around about a third of the way into the picture yeah. which then increases the depth of field that I can achieve one final thought on this, and then again, I, we could probably sit and do this for about a couple of hours, but I'm conscious of the time for the video. But the two things I just want to say briefly, this relationship as well, actually, for me, is really important. Without these here, which obviously were there naturally, but you had the great sense and foresight, not that I need to tell you, but to include these, because if this was just water as yes. an area, yeah. there would be that disconnect then yeah. between those planes. And yeah. so these things work really nicely to let that yes. do its thing, in, yeah. my, in my opinion. Yeah. But if I can ask a final question about yes. paper, yes. Chris, um, what are we on here? And what was the, uh, or what would you consider maybe when printing this sort of image might be best suited and why? Okay, well, I, I always uh, used to very much enjoy uh, the uh, recently discontinued paper which was uh, Photospeed Platinum Gloss uh, but the replacement for that is this paper which is Photospeed Platinum Gloss Art Fibre uh, and it has a very similar look it's not quite the same but it's very similar uh, and because that was my previously my favourite paper I immediately mm. uh, chose to print it on that and I've been thrilled with the result and it mm. has that degree of sparkle and richness that I felt this particular picture needed. I wanted good colour saturation in the uh, foreground rock and it just seemed to work for me. But often paper choice is a, a personal thing and uh, this just seemed to suit this particular image. Yeah, yeah. the more I look at it, the more I like it, Chris. And yeah. this little supporting actor down here, just helping everybody is really, I don't need to tell you, you know what you're doing, <laughs> but beautifully done. Very nice thank for you. us to enjoy it. Yeah, no, thank you. And now, this is, a, this is another interesting one because of conditions. Yes. Often we're waiting for dramatic conditions, sometimes in the landscape, aren't we? And other times we actually don't want it to be quite as dramatic. That's and right. Maybe is this the situation here? Uh, absolutely. So here we're in uh, Colorado, photographing the, the beautiful aspen trees. 
and they uh, invariably grow so closely together because uh, the aspen tree is actually a gift to photographers because they don't propagate by uh, by seed mostly they propagate propagate by underground rhizome so if you have a stand of aspen trees they're all related to one another <laughs> um, that's often why they grow so closely together but as you can see the bark of the aspen tree is really pale in tone and were I to try and take this picture under bright sunny conditions there's no way that the camera sensor could cope with that extreme of contrast and part of the skill or um, understanding of a landscape photographer is using an appropriate light for the subject so for the very at the very most the sort of lighting I want for this picture is cloudy bright so that I can record all the detail that this picture I think mm. requires uh, cameras on a tripod using a 24 to 70 lens manual focus so that I can uh, focus a third of the way into the picture uh, to maximize the depth of field that I think this picture requires yeah, it's just lovely. It's beautiful, isn't it? And it's just one of those ones you can sort of fall into and gaze around. Even though it's mm. packed full of information, in the same way there's plenty of depth and space. And you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and often the, the strongest pattern picture, and in essence this is a pattern picture, has something to break the pattern. And it was this little wiggly tree up the mm. move that I think just mm. breaks that and gives something for the viewer to settle upon and then hopefully appreciate the rest of it. It's one of those pictures you can keep looking at and keep spotting different things, like mm. the little tone of orange in mm. here and the, the charred tree here with that bizarre. And actually, yeah. if you look onto the bark of, a, of an aspen tree, you can often see faces in yes, the- Yes, uh, these eyes. Or this eyes in yeah. the, on the bark it's itself. Scaring me. Yeah. Uh, so, Tim, actually, I want to ask you here. Mm. If you were going to print this image, what, what would you put it on? And then we'll ask what Chris would think. I don't know. I mean, um, <laughs> I'm just trying. Because I tell, the, the reason is because we've got texture. Mm. The, there is texture in the box, but the sort of, it's a sort of smoothness. It's a fine yeah, detail yeah, texture, yeah. isn't it? I mean, because of the warmth in here, I'd probably go like a platinum cotton, probably, mm. or a mm. legacy would mm. probably look quite nice. But to be honest, you could go brighter. You could go platinum gloss art fiber. You're kind of spoiled for choice a little bit on this yeah. one, or platinum yeah. platinum etching, or something like that. Mm. It's one of those shots that you could you could go quite some different ways but because of the nice warmth and things in here I might be tempted to just go for a warmer type of paper mm. but then again saying that because I wouldn't want too much warmth on yeah yeah so highlights. it's a very fine line because um, these are quite cool tones yes. actually if you analyze yeah. it so yeah. I don't really want much warmth so no yeah. when, when the base color of the the paper mm. uh, has a has a has a warmth I I generally go towards either a neutral base color or a mm. cold base colour. Mm. This is actually printed on the original platinum gloss. Mm. Right. Uh, and I was pleased with the result, but I've, uh, I must at some time uh, experiment and, uh, and have a, uh, a print perhaps with my, my favourite of the <laughs> matte papers, which is natural soft textured yes. bright white, which I think would be very That'd suitable be for that. Yeah. 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 yeah, because it would make all the colours pop and mm. then these would really mm. zing off. Yeah, that, yeah maybe that, yeah. Lovely. Thank you, Chris. Let's get oh, on well. to another. I t and I picked this out <laughs> specifically because, well, a couple of things, Chris. Um, snowy images need a little bit of thought, both in capture and definitely in print mm. and, and processing. So this has this sort of, well, obviously wintry feel, but also, you know, monochromatic feel. But I, I may or may not be correcting that because I actually think this is not a mono image is it well done you're probably the first person to comment upon that this is actually a straight color picture mm. yeah if you actually look there's that's color what gave in it that away in, yeah in the, <laughs> and i haven't done any pro any desaturation or anything no it just uh, astounded me that on this particular day she's taken in stourbridge in the west midlands in a park on a day when it we deemed it wasn't prudent to go out in the car so we just walked to the local park uh and uh i uh gravitated to this particular picture. Most of my pictures are incredibly simple and you can't get much simpler than uh, a little uh, shot of a tree. Uh, but it was uh, just the relationship between uh, the tree trunk and the beauty of the way the snow was lying on the upper branches mm. and the shade provided by that tree that provides a visual mm. base to the picture that is really what the photograph is all about. And it's one of my, one of my favorite pictures. Um, it's a very quiet photograph, very simple. It's beautiful, mm. and, and like you said, the, 
the snow on the branches and also these lower ones which don't have it provide that beautiful contrast between the two and that texture. So from a point of view of capturing, we, you know, white balance, I'm thinking uh, where we're exposing with snow cameras, working man, you know, all those things. Is that yeah, stuff absolutely. that was running through your mind? Yeah, very mindful that uh, obviously when we're photographing snow, you want it to record uh, a little bit whiter than the no normal 18% grey that you would normally expect a camera to gravitate to. So I was overexposing by about two thirds of a stop at the capture stage. But obviously with a, a raw file, you've got a fair amount of latitude anyway, so I could fine tune it. As far as the white balance is concerned, my uh, uh, old steam driven Nikon seemed to handle it quite well left on auto. But mm. uh, obviously again with, with the raw capture, if it, it was a little bit awry, I could address that later in, in uh, post-processing. Yeah. So from the point of view of printing snowy images, Tim, I know a lot of people mm. do run into problems a little bit. We've talked a bit about the base of the papers, yeah, white points. What for me, it's just got to be white, bright, bright white kind of base, really. But I do know people who printed on a warmer type of paper and absolutely love it. But for me, it's you want that white coming through, really. So like NST bright white, which I think this is. It's no, it's, it's not. not. No, oh. this is actually platinum matte. Oh, is it? Oh, platinum matte. Um, oh, yeah. okay. I think it needs to be a smooth yeah. paper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, platinum um, matte as well. I, I wouldn't nice want a, a, a paper to intrude with a texture on a scene mm. such as this. And just picking up on something before we started recording. Mm. I mean, if you actually look at a snowy scene, it's certainly not glossy and it's certainly not luster. It's matte, isn't it? Mm. So it seems to suggest that a matte paper would be appropriate. Yeah. So that was the thinking mm. process be behind uh, printing that one in that way. Yeah, lovely. I think really lovely, very qu quiet, like you say, but again, beautiful because there's lots going on and there's these lovely crunchy textures in here and the snow and, and the shade. I'm really happy you mentioned that because it's, it's just works perfectly, you know, um, that natural shade from the tree that was there. And you can see the snow falling, is mm. the snow falling? Yes, it's still, it's, we're still yes. snowing. Yeah. We, I do so. sometimes suffer for my art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the things you go, the things you yeah. go and do. No, that's fab. And I mean, I know we've, we've just touched on a, a corner, a tiny little corner of all your work over these mm. years. And I've, I've, we've been friends on Facebook for a while, Chris, yeah, and I see you putting yeah. images up. And <laughs> yeah. I know you, you do lots of talks in various places and with all your work with the RPS as well. And it's really nice to see some of these images here in person in print when we've only mm. exchanged things digitally before. Mm. Um, but I think what I really enjoy about your work is, is some of these quieter scenes and moments and uh, graphical compositions and you know I think we think in similar ways in, in lots we of ways indeed. which is really nice yeah um, so hopefully that's been interesting for you guys as well to see a little bit more about Chris and what he does and you can find more on his website Chris, Chris well. Palmer photographer at co UK yes perfect <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put it in the description we'll <laughs> yeah well, so so yeah. any other bits we need to cut? I mean, we've been talking about shooting a lot locally, haven't we, as yes, well? Yes, absolutely. Is that, yeah. that's still something season to season you're in, engaged in? I think many of us uh, have realised over the COVID and the lockdown that there are still opportunities to build on local photography. And uh, as I was saying earlier, I used to do a lecture around the clubs called Familiarity Breeds Content. And it's about knowing a location and the opportunity when the conditions present themselves. And I've always listened to the weather forecast. So if the weather forecaster is going to predict uh, mist or fog or ice, my shutter finger starts to itch. And I can gravitate to one of about four different locations that are within 10 or 15 minutes drive of where I live. And I can be into photography. So you can actually maximise even a quite a small window of photography uh, when opportunity presents itself uh, and uh, it's something that I uh, always enjoy doing. Yeah, well keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. Well thank you so much for sharing these pictures and um, hopefully getting everyone out there to kind of see a little bit more of your work and things. What strikes me is all the variedness of your work as well. It's, you kind of don't, you're not, not it's, it's you, you're a photographer in the sense that, a broader sense of photography, not mm. as in you're just a landscape photographer, you're mm. just a, it's, it's very, yeah, inspiring, I think, is the word. Yeah. <laughs> and well, actually, if you've, sorry to jump in, because if, if you've not already seen the video we've done about the RPS side of Chris's work, mm. there's some beautiful images we use as an example, which were Chris's as well, really um, sort of close up, fine detail, in a landscape, whatever you want to call it, uh, <laughs> which really reflect nicely on, that, on, on a different look as well. So, yeah.
Yeah, fantastic. Fab. Well, well, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure and I really enjoyed yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day with us here. <laughs> <laughs> you can come again. <laughs> Right, well, thank you to, to all of you for watching as well. So also don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel and also our newsletter as well. And also don't forget to download the Photospeed Art of Printing, the free book on everything to do with printing. And until next week, um, we will see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>